So, ladies and gentlemen, we met again uh, myself and Salman Bashir in Japan when President of Pakistan visited there and on the sidelines we discussed what needs to be done and what would be our mandate vis-a-vis -vis the trade normalization. And then in May, I think it was probably 27th or 28th of May that uh, Dr. Rahul Kullar came with his team to Pakistan. And we met in the hotel. Uh, Dr. Kullar was having breakfast. And we sat on the sofa before the meeting started. And I knew about Dr. Kullar. I had, uh, I mean, Googled his name and I came to know that he is from Indian Administrative Service. We joined in the same year, which is 1975 batch. Incidentally, Mr. Sharad Sabarwal is also from 1975 batch. Myself, Sharad Sabarwal, Dr. Rahul Kula, and Salman Bashir. We started our career at the same year. So I asked Dr. Rahul Kula that what is his views on India-Pakistan trade normalization. And he, in turn, came out in Punjabi and he said, he knew I was Punjabi also. So he said, Karna ki hai. So I said, Karna ho ko ji hai jo tusi chao ge. So we hit upon very well at that time. And we came out with a road map with definite milestones. And that uh, road map was very much uh, liked by everybody who was uh, involved in this process. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this, that at the very outset, three days after this roadmap was signed, we received a letter from Mr. Anand Sharma. And he immediately gave political ownership to the whole process. He appreciated the efforts made by us, and he assured his counterpart, Makhtoum Amin Fahim, that he would be getting regular feedback on this, and he would be following it up. That was a very encouraging sign. Then what happened was that uh, next round had already been planned in November. But before that, an opportunity came which gave a kickstart to the normalization process. And that was when Pakistan's case was put up in the WTO for a 75 item trade package which was finalized by EU to help Pakistan overcome the difficulties which was created by floods. India had not approved in it in the WTO but a lucky break came when Dr. Uh, Mr. Anand Sharma also had the portfolio of the textile ministry. The textile lobby was opposed to it, and Dr. Anand Sharma, we, we thought that he would be helpful in uh, getting this uh, support of the Indian government to the EU package. He invited Makhtoum Amin Fahim to India, and we came with a delegation of businessmen, which was approximately 19 number. We came to Mumbai and then to Delhi. And there Dr. Anand Sharma unilaterally announced the support of the government of India for the trade package which was to be decided in the WTO. That was I think a major breakthrough which got the private sector of Pakistan on board. They had been extremely skeptical of this process because some of them had the stories to tell that they tried to export to India and their consignment was rejected or what happened or there was delay in the inspection and somehow there was a, a, a great degree of misunderstanding. That single action of Mr. Anand Sharma removed those misunderstandings. And then Indian side showed its sincerity by be willing to talk about all 
items related with non-tariff barriers. The businessmen of Pakistan had a good meeting with all the regulators of Indian imports at Delhi. They, the session lasted for almost uh, half the day and all questions were answered to the full satisfaction of the Pakistani business people. Let me say this, that in that spirit of accommodation, Indian government's stance was very, very helpful. When we told them that we would need to have three agreements with you, a limited MRA, a redressal of grievances agreement, and also custom cooperation agreement, although it required I mean, uh, interaction with other ministries and their agreements, their I mean, consent. But the team of uh, Dr. Rahul and Mr. Anand Sharma, they delivered on their promises. So this was in the spirit of accommodation that Indian part was, I mean, encouraging us. So when we went back, that was the time when we took the most crucial decision. We thought that we can take the case to the cabinet for complete normalization of trade relationship with India. And in the history of Pakistan's cabinet, this is the only time that a formal summary or as they call note here was not moved and circulated to the members of the cabinet. It was based on a presentation made by me to the cabinet members. And in that presentation, we traced the historical perspective. I explained to the members of the cabinet that in 1947, when India and Pakistan got independent, <coughs> The GATT was negotiated at that time. And they made a special provision <coughs> in Article 24 that India and Pakistan being a single economy can have any kind of arrangement of mutual cooperation in trade matters without recourse to WTO. They appreciated that it is a single economy and they would need to cooperate in future also. They might have very special arrangements which may not require approval of the WTO. I told the cabinet members that Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, when he was asked about India-Pakistan relationship in future, he said that the relationship would be like America and Canada. Not many people know that while the Kashmir problem cropped up in 1947 and continued throughout 1948, Pakistan and India both signed GATT agreement which grant and granted each other MFN status. I brought this to the notice of the cabinet that the leadership of India and Pakistan, even when the conflict was going on, had the courage and the long-term approach of having a normal trade relationship. I told them that at that time, there was so much understanding that when Mahatma Gandhi died, that unfortunate assassination led to a day of mourning declared by the government of Pakistan. There was, that was the political leadership of that time. And then from 1947 to 1958 and onwards, Pakistan and India signed more than two dozen agreements facilitating trade. The spirit of accommodation was so much that once 
through one agreement, grain was exported from Sindh province to India and the Indian government supplied wheat flour to what is now Bangladesh, then East Pakistan. Even Indian goods were going via Vaga and Peshawar to Afghanistan. This was the first Afghan Afghanistan-Pakistan transit trade agreement. There was an agreement which was signed between Nepal and Pakistan and goods were going to Nepal through Pakistan and India. This was a region which was economically and commercially well integrated at that time. There is a misconception that the military government don't like such kind of economic integration. But I tell you in good authority that after the imposition of martial law in 1958, nothing was changed. I mean, the economic and commercial cooperation continued to flourish in the same manner till 1965. After 1965, everything changed. And then it was the trade and commerce relationship were revived through Shimla Agreement. And slowly and gradually, both India and Pakistan started working on positive list approach. And that was an incremental approach till 2005. No, 1990, uh, 1996, yes, that's right. When India granted, uh, not granted, but India r removed the restriction on the positive list of goods because MFN means trade and services and investment and whatnot, but that, that restriction was removed. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we started this process, we tried to get the Pakistani business community on board. And Pakistani community, business community, when they uh, saw the sincerity on the part of Indian uh, government, and especially Commerce Ministry, they, they supported this process. But let me say this that while this thing was going on and we were getting praise, me and Rahul Khuller, that we are doing a marvelous job in normalizing trade relationship, there were warning signs on the horizon. Let me read from the joint statement which was drafted by Rahul Khuller and myself in November 2011. This is after the sixth round, which was concluded, which was uh, from 14th to 16th November. Both sides agreed that Pakistan's Commerce Minister's visit to India after 35 years and the political ownership by leaders of both the countries has not only given the trade normalization process further strength and direction, but a great hope and confidence to the business community also. They expressed hope that positive development in the trade track would encourage similar progress in other components of the dialogue process. This was the hope which we jointly shared. This was in November. Then, after this, the, after the decision of the Cabinet of Pakistan, that a Commerce Ministry has been given the free hand to negotiate the complete trade normalization. There were some skeptics. And cabinet, as you know, comprises of different school of thought. I had been grilled by the cabinet members because I was making the presentation. And whatever I'm telling you here is with total honesty and sincerity that 
we thought that we will chalk out the road map and the presentation was made to the cabinet on 14th February 2012. Mr. Anand Sharma and Mr. Rahul Kular were both in Pakistan at that time. I presented the case that we have to do away with the positive list and negative list by the end of the year. And I was not successful. It was a great disappointment. And the cabinet postponed the decision. Mr. Anand Sharma was there in Karachi with Rahul Kular. And I was really, really disappointed. And uh, Mr. Sharad Sabarwal, who had been very uh, thickly involved with the trade negotiations and the process, and was working with utmost sincerity, he was also extremely disappointed. Why I could not get it through was that in the cabinet, they said that there has been hardly any progress in other areas. And it is only the trade track which is galloping ahead. And this is part of a composite process in which there are other tracks. <laughs> now, lo and behold, I worked behind the scenes. And on 29th of February, because we had promised that by February we would move from positive list to negative list, so my credibility was at stake and the credibility of the government of Pakistan was at stake because I had signed or I had agreed on behalf of the government of Pakistan. And because it was a leap year, so that was a lucky break. So on 29th of February, I, I requested the Prime Minister and he allowed me to represent the case in the cabinet. And behind the scene negotiation with other stakeholders like commerce, uh, sorry, textile ministry, industries ministry, and agriculture ministry resulted in a bit expanded negative list. But we were able to move from the positive list to the negative list. And the cabinet decision was that Ministry of Commerce would negotiate with the Ministry of Commerce of India and come back to the cabinet for creating a level playing field as far as commerce and trade is concerned between the two countries by 31st December. While I succeeded in getting it through, I am reminded that I had to read out from the letter of the Commerce Minister of India in that meeting. I am sharing this with you that that part of the letter which I read before the cabinet was this letter was written to Makhdoom Amin Fahim on December 2, 2011 and I quote we are indeed at the threshold of a historic opportunity for moving out of the shackles of a troubled past into a future of regional peace and understanding. I look forward to working closely with you to shape better opportunities for our future generations. This passage I quoted before the cabinet to show that the very important members of the Indian cabinet is committed to an overall normalization of relationship and it is not concerned with only the trade normalization part. Ladies and gentlemen, why we could not move forward? Why the process got stalled? This is a big question. And let me share with you that what happened in the cabinet meetings. One of the cabinet members said that I will translate in English, although he used the local language, that it is like a horse-drawn carriage which is pulled by five, six horses, and this composite dialogue is like that. If one horse is galloping at 
40 miles and the other horses are galloping or not galloping at all, what will happen to the carriage? So this is the kind of examples which uh, were given in the cabinet meeting. <coughs> My assessment is that the dialogue process would restart very soon. It would again be a composite dialogue. It would again have a trade component in it. And as I said in Woodrow Wilson Institute of Scholars in April where I was invited, I told them that my vision is that we will have a well integrated South Asia in the years to come. And my assessment is that, and my hope is, that the day would not be far when India and Pakistan would have, would become one economic unit. I mean, Pakistan started its goods train to Istanbul on experimental basis. But I think if we can have a Pak China corridor, why can't we have an India, Pakistan and Europe corridor? Why can't the goods from India cross through Pakistan and go to Gawadar port or Karachi port and then be exported to Gulf if your ports are congested? Why can't we provide that opportunity? If we are extending the facilities to China, why can't we have the same kind of facilities for India? The bigger picture has to be kept in mind. If goods from India cross over to Pakistan, Iran and Turkey and go to Europe, that would make the whole region more peaceful and prosperous. Pakistan and India both have a large services sector, 53% of the GDP. Pakistan and India both have signed under the SAC umbrella an agreement to liberalize the services sector. Opportunity is coming in January. I think we need to liberalize the services sector. We need to liberalize the visa regime. We need to remove the digital disconnect. When I come to India, I have to borrow a SIM to make my phone operational. It is especially, uh, I mean, I've been given this privilege of having the police exempted. <laughs> After all, the two countries were one at one time. We have thousand years of peacefully living together, coexisting side by side. Pakistanis, when they come here in India, they, most of them, find themselves at home. I mean, I come from Jalandhar. My parents come from Jalandhar again. They, they used to tell me the stories about Jalandhar. There are people who are from the part which is now Pakistan. They are very nostalgic about it. We can have so much of tourism. We can have so much of trade. Vaga border is getting choked. But we were having seven crossing points from 1947 to 1965. Even we had a crossing point at River Chinab, where a custom post was operating to facilitate timber trade between India and Pakistan. We had three crossing points in Sindh, one in Bahalpur, and five in Punjab. Indian goods were coming freely to Pakistan and getting exported to Afghanistan also. Why can't we develop a bigger picture? 
we should not be, I mean, as Mr. Anand Sharma rightly pointed out, be shackled with our past. So, ladies and gentlemen, our success story between Mr. Kohler and myself was that we worked with honesty of purpose. We tried our best to overcome the difficulties. We never looked back. We never pointed accusing finger at each other. Even while India and Pakistan businessmen were here and one businessman started recounting his bad experiences, I stopped him and snubbed him. And I told him that Pakistan, India has a very special kind of environment. And I recited an Urdu couplet, Ye ek jadu nagri hai, tum aawazon pe dhyan na do. Peechhe mud kar dekhoge, to pathar ke ho jaoge. So we kept on looking forward. And I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, we all have a role to play. ICRIA is doing a wonderful job. It is telling both policy, policy planner in both India and Pakistan, what are the possible fruits of this economic integration? The private sector is meeting frequently. Before I came here, I talked to Bashir Ali Muhammad of Gulaman Textile Mills, who chaired the first meeting of the India-Pakistan Joint Business Council. And Mr. Manjal is a very active member and uh, heading the Indian side of that, that forum. Their positive energies need to be unleashed. The businessmen of the two countries can find their own ways. The government has only to facilitate them. I am extremely hopeful that in days to come, the leadership of both countries, driven by the private sector, and I also hope that the media would also develop a bigger picture. It will try to, I mean, it must try to tell the public what are the possible benefits of the economic integration of the region to create a positive atmosphere. So in the end, I want to thank all of you, especially to the ICRIA for inviting me here. I have been very, uh, I mean, uh, general in my approach, but I thought that you people are the expert, you know the facts and figure, and you can go to the website and find out about that. ICRIA scholars are working on this theme. They know about, I mean, what is the trade relationship, what are the trade potential, what are the areas on which we have to concentrate. But I will uh, confine myself to uh, our experiences and the lessons learned from there. I think with dedicated honesty and purpose, we can really make a positive contribution. And in my humble capacity, I will always be very willing to, I mean, play my role in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zafar Sahib, for those very wise words. And I welcome Sunil Munjal, uh, who is a friend of a career. And we are counting on people like yourselves to take